so I double checked. Uh, we did lose everything, so I'm really sorry, guys. Would it would it be cool if we start from the beginning and then we can kind of, I guess, summarize a little bit of what we what we lost there? Yeah, no, we can we can do we can start over. That's that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I promise we're more professional. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to restart my backup audio for myself, and all right, we are good to go. Welcome back to the Christ in Culture. This is Clint. And this is Steve. And this week on the show, we have a special guest, Jamie Cleeton from Paradigm Catholic Clothing out in California. Jamie, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Appreciate it. I am a husband coming up on 10-year uh, anniversary, coming up soon, and have four kids. Cyrus, my oldest, Eliana and Clara, twin girls. They're five, and then Xavier is just over a year. I'm in San Diego, California, born and raised here, and... I work full-time at the campus minister at a Newman Center at San Diego State University. That's a reasonably new job for me, coming up on just being there for just about a year. And then before then was a youth minister for eight years. That's awesome. Yeah, so guys, we, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you guys, a little bit vulnerable. We've been having some issues this morning with, with our Skype, and this is actually our third time recording this. But before that, we didn't know anything about Jamie other than that he has this awesome company, Paradigm. So we are right here learning with you guys. And like, like I said, the last time we recorded this, Jamie, one of the things I really appreciate about your company is even on your website, it shows uh, how much of a family man you are and how important your family is to you. And I think that's something that's really beautiful. Yeah, thanks. So going along with that, if you want to just tell us a little bit about Paradigm, what it is and, and where it came from, I think that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, for sure. So. Knowing that I wanted to work in, in ministry, I mean, I went to school for theology and catechetics, so I knew I wanted to go into youth ministry and mm. knew I wanted to move back home and uh, work in San Diego, and so I needed a side hustle. And so me and my wife were thinking about, okay, what are some other ways we can make some money on the side, but yet be doing ministry? And as I was beginning my youth ministry career, I guess, I, I, I saw my teens go to these conferences or things like that and buy these shirts and, and then kind of never really wear them out in public, I guess, but uh, except wear them to youth group. And I guess in my head, I was kind of like, well, well, kind of what's the purpose of that? You know, like what, what are, what are we doing as a, as a church? If, if we do this where it's kind of like, you know, you wear your, your bowling shirt to go bowling and you wear your Christian shirt to go Christian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so then like, we get, began to brainstorm this this idea of like, well, what if we used our clothing? What if we were more creative in our approach? And I think there's a, I think there's a, a place for you know blatantly Christian shirts, sure. uh, but we wanted to hit a different end of the market of just something where these high schoolers or young adults can wear it on campus and can stir up a conversation would be our ultimate goal. Creating a conversation that leads to an evangelization opportunity is kind of our our tagline. And so we wanted these this apparel that was comfortable, that was on on point, on trend, and then also created that conversation that kind of like, you know, came in the back door. You know, it wasn't just like blatantly too obvious, but but stirred through creativity, through a quote, whatever it may be, stirred into a conversation. Yeah, for sure. And looking at, it, I mean, they're they're subtle, they're Catholic, but they're definitely they're cool products. They're they're stuff that. Uh, I think a lot of people would, would love to wear still. I mean, just looking at the list of people that, that you guys work with, I mean, A-Lob's a, a buddy of ours too. You got a bunch of musicians on there. You have, who else? Uh, Chastity Project, I think, was on your list too. You had a whole bunch of just really cool people that, that you're partnering with too. And I think that's exactly what these things do. I know before we were recording, I was talking about the Maxwell Colby products that you have. I think you have his stickers and T-shirts and stuff like that. And just that typewriter, looking at it, you're, you're not going to know what it is or it's not going to make any sense. But when you ask, why are you wearing a typewriter on your shirt, uh, that, that opens the door for a conversation. And I think you have a lot of really cool products like that that, that start that question of, of just why, why this? Why are you wearing this? Uh, I think that's really cool. 
Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We're kind of, you know, like the whole idea is to get someone to come up and kind of, as we were talking about before, like kind of knock on your door. I think as like Catholics, we're sometimes not creative enough in our approach. I think we have a lot of talented and creative artists who create very beautiful things. And I think sometimes we're just from a ministry standpoint or from creating conversations or evangelization, we kind of get stuck in a mold. And the kind of the idea behind this using clothing, you know, where it's like, look, you know, you're, you're putting on a, you're putting on clothing every day. I I hope, you know, and that, that, uh, that we're, we're going to do this. So why not use it? Why not use this opportunity that we have? And, you know, the analogy, like I used before, you know, is like, like going door to door that like, what if we had someone come up to our door though and knock on our door, you know, it's like the typewriter or like the, we have a shirt or hat that's, that's Braille. And that I think most fully fulfills kind of our mission of kind of drives people crazy that they see this person wearing Braille hat or Braille shirt. And they're like, wait, you know, what is that? And so I've, I've had multiple people tell me stories of people coming up to them and, and being like, well, all right, it's driving me crazy. I need to know, you know, this is a complete stranger coming up to them and saying, right. what, what's your hat what's the meaning with the braille and actually the braille so then the person's able to say oh it, the braille uh is from scripture john 9 25 which is when jesus heals the blind man and the blind man's brought for the pharisees and he says one thing i know is that i was blind and now i see and then they're able to share and in my life i was blind but now i see since i've met jesus christ and all of a sudden they're sharing their testimony and the person can't be upset with them you know because they came up and asked about their hat or their shirt and, and it led to that kind of opportunity yeah, I mean, I think the stuff that you use are, are it's so creative. Like, what's your inspiration? How did you think of using Braille on clothing? Because as far as I'm aware, I've never seen that anywhere. <laughs> so, well, like, how do you think of this stuff? That one I thought of as I was sitting in traffic. And maybe that's not <laughs> a very Southern California thing to do. And I have no idea why. I, I, I think a lot of it, to be honest, a lot of it's just come from prayer life. I don't know. Like, I just think like things just kind of like pop in my head as I'm like praying or as I'm like preparing a talk or things like that, where I'm just living my life. I'm not like sitting down and put myself in a corner and be like, all right, I need to dream up an idea for my clothing company. It just kind of just kind of comes and like, oh, man, that that's a really cool piece of theology or that's really interesting. And and it's just kind of maybe the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. And I, I wonder if that's just kind of how you think in a way, because I know for Steve and Gordon and I, one of the reasons we started this this show is just the way that we think is when we watch movies or we read books or TV shows or listen to music, the very first thought that comes to our mind is just, where is Christ in this? Like, what is he trying to reveal to us in this? And maybe that's just kind of a, I don't know, just the way that your, your brain kind of is, is working there. Yeah. So one of the cool things that we do on this show or one of the things that we really like is we share... what they're listening to as well. So are you taking in any media right now? Any movies, TV shows, music? Well, I'd actually like to hear you guys lead the way on this one so I can Great. see how you go on this. Yeah. Steve, you want to go ahead and start us off? Yeah. So I have been reading a book here called Return of the Prodigal Son by Henry Nguyen. Uh, it was a book that my friend Mackenzie had told me that I need to stop whatever else that I was reading and start reading that book. Uh, so I have just started reading that. Um, it seemed fitting to do during Holy Week. Other than that, I'm just kind of rewatching a few things. I just watched a show on Netflix called The Umbrella Academy, which is a pretty cool I just show. I two days ago, too. Yeah, it's a pretty cool show. And yeah, other than that, I uh, haven't been taking too much, but... I always like to try to do something a little bit extra during Holy Week because it is a pretty special week. It's Holy Week. Yeah, I, I think with Umbrella Academy, at least, Gordon and I have been talking too, and I know you brought it up, Steve. That's probably going to end up being on the show at some point. So if you guys are big fans of Umbrella Academy or if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's it's really it's really weird. It's a lot of good stuff. Uh, it's superhero-esque, but in a very different way than what we're used to. So that'll probably end up being on the show somewhere, whether it be a podcast, a blog, or a video. We'll probably be doing something on that. So you guys can stay posted for that. I have been mostly taken in podcasts, to be honest. I've been just crushing them ever since Gomer was on and he told us to start listening to podcasts at double speed. I've just been going through so many podcasts. It's unbelievable. 
So I'm, a, I'm actually almost out of stuff to listen to. I've been going through so many, and I've got a lot of different shows I listen to. So, so there's Which that. And then, you listen, what podcast are you listening to? Yeah, so right now I'm listening to about 10 different ones. So I've got Catching Foxes. I've got Catholic Stuff You Should Know. I listen to our own stuff. I listen to Bishop Barron, his Word on Fire show, and the, the homilies, both. Pines with Aquinas, Father Mike Schmitz, The Crunch, Clerically Speaking, all that stuff. So I've just been kind of going through those really, really fast, and there's a lot of good stuff in them too. So, And the newest thing actually is, is brand new. So I just got this last night. I was speaking at Gordon's Parish. Gordon is the other co-host that we do the show with. I was just doing a guest speaking thing there, and one of our good friends, Chris Donato, is also one of the, the missionaries there. And when I was getting ready to leave, he snuck this book. I don't know if you guys can see it. He snuck this book into my car, and all of my best books that I get always come from Chris, like, giving them to me. So this, it's called Not a Tame Lion, and it's about C.S. Lewis and his spirituality and his philosophy. So I haven't gotten it started yet, because I literally got it less than 12 hours ago, but it looks awesome. And I, I love C.S. Lewis and Tolkien and the Inklings, so I'm really excited for that one. I'll probably start it tomorrow, to be honest. So that's all I got. Jamie, you got anything that you're looking at right now? Yeah, so the book I just finished is called Interior Freedom. It's a really good one. Uh, it's by a French priest. I want to say it's Jacques Philippe. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, he's awesome. What's that? He's awesome. I've read a couple of his books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's super easy read, but it was like, it was really good. Um, and then me and my wife, you know, we kind of like to close up the day watching some shows and whatnot. So we like, we really like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We like this really... <laughs> <laughs> so that's not Steve, isn't that your show right now? What's that? Uh, I'm yeah, sure so that's Steve's show right now too. By by my show, you mean I binge watched it and it, well, I guess I am still watching it because they're they're in the middle of a season. But yeah, it's a great show, great okay. show. I I just got caught up on it like last month. Yeah, it's really well. It's it's well done. It's not just like your typical Andy Samberg like you know SNL stuff. Like it's really, <laughs> really well written, great characters. I was also, you know, our whole family was like sick the past couple of weeks, and so I uh, had a lot of time to take in a lot of media. Uh, but most of it was was with my kids, so I can't just be like watching my own shows. Uh, <laughs> so I watched the movie Christopher Robin, uh, oh, which I, I heard that was I, awesome. Yeah, I hadn't seen it. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot this movie came out, and I had heard really good things about it. And I'm not, even though my family's a big Disney family, I. I was never a big Winnie the Pooh person, but man, it was a really, it was a really good movie. It has like, a, like there, like set like one part that like really kind of stood out to me. Oh yeah, know. absolutely, go for it. Well, and this is, uh, I'm actually using this in a talk coming up soon, and going to be quoting the great philosopher, you know, great nice. mid-century philosopher Winnie the Pooh. Uh, <laughs> but he, the the tagline in the movie is that Winnie the Pooh says that eventually Christopher Robin kind of learns is that doing nothing often leads to the very best something. And I was sharing that also with my my young adults at the Newman Center, just that I think as a church and especially in like ministry circles, we've forgotten how to do that. That everything is is oriented around doing something. That we're always trying to do something from event to event to event or even within events, you know, or retreats that are supposed to be not doing something, you know, not doing the regular and then we fill it with doing stuff. Right. That yeah. Uh, we're not really creating community anymore that we're just like entertaining each other and that like this idea that I you know like some of the best times I've had with like people that I view as like my brothers or like people that I really share community with was kind of like just doing nothing in the dorm you know or like uh it's like an in- it's not nothing it's like an intentional nothingness right yeah yeah it's like nothingness for a purpose my mom always liked to say like vacations are for wasting time together mm. and like you know, I don't know just like in in our homes like we we tend to waste time with our roommates or whatnot and like that's how we grow together I think as a church we've kind of lost uh that and I think when we do nothing it leads to a great something to quote the great Winnie the Pooh <laughs> no I, th- I think that's really awesome because I think especially I've done a lot of retreats before I was a youth minister I actually designed retreats and put on retreats for kids and did over a hundred of them. And we 
we get so just busy trying to fill those retreats and our ministries and our lives with so many different things. It's almost spiritually numbing in a way where mm-hmm. we kind of just become desensitized to why we're actually there. It's more of just trying to preoccupy ourselves. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's a really cool insight. I know, again, Gordon watched that movie and spoke really highly of it, so maybe that's something we'll have to check out. Steve, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I think we did a podcast on it, though. Did we? I yeah. wasn't on that one. <laughs> I think it was me and Gordon. Oh, that's awkward. No, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much like what you were saying. So, like, Holy Spirit and whatnot. No, that's awesome. Yeah, so I just have – so just kind of get back um, – to, to paradigm and just, you know, because honestly, one of the things that we, we love is, you know, like God is so written on our hearts that when we, you know, kind of to get a little bit aesthetic theology about it, but whenever we some, see something beautiful or something speaks to us, it ultimately leads its way back to the Father. Like those are certain things that God gives us that are almost sacramental in a way that allow us to look forward to heaven. And so kind of get it back to like paradigm with clothing. You know, I had heard it said, and I think there's a lot of truth in the, you know, like our, like the way that we present ourselves or our, like what we do externally really reflects our internal reality. And sometimes the external even helps to shape the internal reality. It's part of the reason that there's so much beautiful like artwork in the church is because it helps to form an understanding of theology. And so I would just be interested to hear sort of your take on the part that sort of clothing or sort of the place that clothing has in that. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm asking? Um, I understand the point you're making, but what's like necessarily the question? Uh, I guess my question is just kind of like, what is your take on the place that clothing has in sort of that grander scheme of helping to like reflect God and lead us back there and i don't know i'm just kind of interested on your take on that i mean i don't i don't want to like overstate the place of you know clothing which is really just like first of all at a very basic level it serves a a purpose but also there's an op like like i said earlier like an opportunity for art and beauty uh not only of portraying the human body but also like of of it's a it's a you know like we don't we don't get to walk around on a daily basis holding up uh, the artwork that we have on our wall. Like that'd be kind of awkward if people right. just walking around the mall and they have like they're just carrying you know framed artwork that like says something about them who they are. Like really like our clothing is kind of our greatest opportunity. Even like the music we listen to or the media, it's not like that that's worn on us like like a billboard where our our clothing is. You know just naturally it is. People see it and so. It can either be a statement about you, which isn't a bad thing. Like, I think it's I think that's a really good thing um, to like let it be like this is uniquely me. This is my style. This is like uh, I'm very like that. Like, I'm very picky about the clothing I wear because it's like I want it to reflect me, Uh, you know, like. But I think an even greater calling than that is to have our clothing take them beyond ourselves and uh, introduce them not just to us, but to him, you know, and that's kind of. The idea here is that is that we can, through our clothing, we can take them to something higher, something greater, and that's to to the Lord, obviously. That, that's awesome. Going back to something you said before, where you were talking about how we're just not as creative anymore as as Christians. I think looking at the history of the church, we've used so many different types of art and media throughout our church. If, if we look at the I don't know, a thousand years ago or 500 years ago, the art that was being created by the church to communicate our faith and to draw us closer to God, it's beautiful. It's legendary. It's what fills the museums. And I think in a way, we as a modern culture have kind of lost an appreciation for that in some ways. So do you think that, I'm not trying to say that clothing is going to replace art in any ways, but do you think that this is a modern way to make ourselves the canvas that can communicate that same message of what you're trying to say, where this is the art form that we have now, and it's more mobile. You don't have to go to a museum or to a church to see it, and it can still communicate that same message. Is that kind of where you're going with that? Yeah, yeah, I think for sure. I think, you know, I think the canvas changes, you know, based on 
You know, I mean, it's just, it's the fact that like, it's, you know, 500 years ago, they didn't have screen printing and like people weren't wearing clothing that like stated something, you know, that like the opportunity that we have now, like you said, I don't know, like it'd be interesting to like, you know, go to the Louvre and there's like a <laughs> t-shirt. I, I would, I would cringe at that right now, yeah. you know, but yeah, I think, I think it's interesting. Actually something I haven't really thought about, you know, that I, I am, I, I do think that the church has always been a pioneer in art, like you're saying, and I think sure. we've lost that a little bit, that we've we've kind of just started knocking off culture. You know, we just, that's part of the, the things that I started to cringe a little bit with in the t-shirt world is like every t-shirt I saw was like a secular brand, but Christianized. And we used to be the one setting the trend, not manipulating the trend. And I, I, I think like you're saying to like do that from a canvas perspective is really interesting to like, you know, kind of like Apple created the tablet, you know, it's like, it wasn't even a market and now it is. And exactly. like that, that we can do that as a church with art. Yeah. yeah I, I think in a way we're going from creators to, to imitators. We're trying to yeah. adapt the church to culture rather than the other way around. Um, so I think that's kind of an interesting, interesting way of looking at it, that this is a, a new way of pioneering something that's still beautiful. I mean, your clothing is, is awesome stuff, but it's it's something that's new, at least in this this way of doing it, I think. So I think that's pretty cool. But clothing changes a lot. I'm not super fancy or good at, I don't know, looking great with, with my clothing choices. I'm pretty pretty much a cheap guy when it comes to that kind of stuff. But one of the things I was thinking about prepping for this the show was, I was actually listening to Catching Foxes a couple weeks ago, and Gomer mentioned on there that uh, maybe this is true, maybe it's not. The store H&M has 52 different quote-unquote seasons for their like clothing line, and so we see this like just constant uh, change of what is, what is in, and obviously that's kind of a rare case if that's true, but I think clothing is something like technology that's constantly changing. So has that kind of affected the way that you're able to do this ministry or this evangelization where what was in three months ago might not be in, in, in a month? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's just, that's something that's, that's hard to navigate and to, you know, when you're printing a hundred pieces or more and then you try to get it you know, out and then like not have it fill my my, my garage with tons of <laughs> leftover shirts and whatnot yeah i mean and then we got like i mean for for us from a business standpoint you know it's like we're shipping all across the nation and and it's unreal how like what's popular here in california is popular in ohio three years from now and it's like okay so we can kind of hold on to stock a little bit knowing that it's going to be popular in the midwest in a couple of years it's interesting to try to you know navigate also what's popular here isn't necessarily popular there yet and so yeah there's a lot we're i we're still figuring that out uh, mm. it's, it's a hard thing to, to to navigate just out of curiosity from like a ministry standpoint obviously the message that we're trying to to share like the gospel hasn't changed right it's been two thousand years so i guess the, the way that we do that has to change has to kind of adapt a little bit but has that i guess has that kind of affected you too just the way that you have to present the same message i don't know if you guys reuse designs or stuff like that on, on different clothing but um just like the constant need to come up with those new creative ways that we were talking about before is that kind of like a pressure or is that something like you said where it just kind of happens it just kind of comes to you yeah I mean, I think it's a little bit of both of just like, I always want to come up with new stuff and not just, you know, recycle. Uh, but I think some of our ideas we've had, like, I've really liked, like the Braille one. Like we had the Braille, we've had the Braille shirt for like four or five years now. And it's kind of like, all right, it's time to to retire that shirt. But I liked the idea. And so that's why we just did a new hat. that's mm -hmm. like a Braille hat that involves like a patch on kind of this popular style of hat right now. And so some of them were, were like, reusing that idea but redesigning you know sure and but but a lot of it's like yeah and I've, I've started to really the early days of paradigm i did pretty much all the designs but now i kind of oversee a design team and so i have a 
a, a team of really creative, awesome Catholic designers who, you know, we kind of put our heads together and dream up stuff. And, and that's been really cool because that, now it's like beyond just my imagination, but like bringing in other creative people and their other talents and their ideas has been really, really awesome as the company's grown the past couple of years, because it's really been the past like two years that it's really kind of blown up a lot more. Mm -hmm. So much so last year I did this full time. I was doing Paradigm full time last year. Um, oh, wow. And, but I soon discovered it wasn't what I wanted to do full time. <laughs> I, I needed to get back into, you know, grassroots ministry. And so, um, so now I kind of oversee things a little more and not just running the company and have a team around me. And that's awesome. That is cool. So just out of curiosity, like yeah. this is this is really cool stuff that, that you're putting out. But as far as like normal Catholics who know nothing about fashion whatsoever, like Steve and I, what what is like stuff that? Well, I mean, you're a little bit fancier than I am, but what are some <laughs> things that we we can do as just like normal Catholics um, to kind of embrace this this form of evangelization that is not the norm? Because I know, like you were saying before, a lot of youth and adults, too, are not going to want to wear the explicit Catholic clothing all the time. And so I guess, yeah, so even if it's not stuff like like your paradigm clothing, what is a way that we can use our clothing to kind of communicate our beliefs in a way? Yeah. I don't know, immediately the quote that kind of popped in my head was from Pope Francis, from, you know, his encyclical, The Joy of the Gospel, and just, he has this line where he talks about that being on mission is, is not something he can up he can uproot from himself without uprooting his very identity. And then he kind of ends this powerful quote with saying, like, I am mission on this earth. You know, he doesn't say I am on mission, he doesn't say I'm going on mission, he doesn't say, but he says, like, I am mission on this earth. I just think of like, I think, you know, a big element of that broad term we like to use the new evangelization is, is just looking at every aspect of our life as mission and understanding that, you know, from clothing to keychains to whatever it may be. And not that we're a walking Catholic marketplace, you know, that's not the goal, but it's more, we're it, it's more a reflection of who we are. You know, it's, 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 you know, be who you were created to be and you will set the world on fire. You know, right. like that the ultimate gift you can give to the world is not just cool Catholic stuff. The ultimate gift you can give to the world is yourself. Right. You know? Yeah. And that, that gift of yourself is only good if you're giving yourself to Christ, you know? So thus you are led to Christ through the gift of yourself. And, and that means every aspect of your life from your, your podcast to your, your club at school to your, your job, you know, like that every aspect is you're reflecting yourself. And if the heart of yourself is, is Christ, then, then you're leading them to Christ, you know? And I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but. No, I think it does. And even just looking at, I mean, we are the body of Christ on earth, right? And so what we do, what we wear, what we say, uh, all of that is, is Christ acting. And it's Christ's representation of himself on, on earth to others. And so I think it's really important to think about what are you wearing? What are you doing? What are you saying? And is that something that's drawing others to Christ or is it not? Right. And like you said, I, I think that's all rooted in understanding your identity as a Christian, as a son or a daughter of God. And is that rooted in a relationship with him or or is it not? And I think that's kind of the difference. Yeah, and that's that's kind of why. So our, our logo is a is is a pyramid, you know that that, mm -hmm. and kind of the the idea there is that if you stand at the base of a pyramid, your attention is automatically drawn where, you know, it's drawn that's upwards. You know, not mm -hmm. just to the pyramid itself, but almost yes, you follow the pyramid, but it's like you're drawn like up, like outside of it, you know, and to the heavens. And so like that's that's our idea not just through clothing but through the way we live through the conversations we have that hopefully that the clothing is the tool that leads to that but not the evangelization itself you know like mm. it's it would be kind of cheap to expect a shirt to evangelize but it's like no the shirt leads to them encountering you you as a person and the way you live and the things you have to say and then then you you know then the shirt and yourself are both the pyramid that leads people to, to beyond itself you know, to, mm. to, to the Lord. 
yeah, so it's kind of like almost this inception of the the shirt or the hat or whatever leads to you, and you therefore lead to something greater, which is which is God. Exactly. 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 Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I really like that. Steve, you still with us? Yeah. I was just kind of hijacking. Talk much. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. the opposite. Oh. He's actually the the talkative <laughs> one of the group, and I'm the quiet one. I'm just yeah. really really curious. No, no, I think it's good. No, I just think it's really interesting because in our faith and even in scripture, you know, the clothes that people wear tend to be so important, you know, even like with vestments at mass or even in the old, you know, being like the imagery of being clothed in purity and righteousness. I just think that, you know, there's something, there's like a uniquely spiritual element to what we wear because it does reflect who we are in such a way like it is unique to us like our style is unique to us but also that it can say a lot about what's important to us so i really like james hearing just that you know with paradigm that it's something that can fit into the style but also speak of something higher than ourselves Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i think that's awesome stuff i I did have one kind of throwback question and so hopefully this is still a little bit relevant, but last year at the, the Met Gala, the theme was essentially the Catholic Church. So I was wondering, well, first off, were you able to see some of the, the outfits and, and kind of feedback from that event? And right. what, yeah. what are your thoughts on, on that whole thing? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know, to me that that event did not have as much to do with like fashion or at least the the, the element of fashion that, that paradigm is in but i think for sure. <laughs> um, more of a like for us like i don't know a lot of people like will, will I, I think there's a lot of people that got offended by it which is understandable there's a lot of people that wanted to immediately like defend the church you know which is understandable but i think more so as a church we we, we should have looked at that and like almost like from a constructive criticism standpoint and said like i think this is these are people who rather than just be quick to just defend the church who is you know the church is fine you know like (laughs) doesn't need our immediate defense but it's more so these are people that are in need of healing you know and i think from a i mean you guys who do ministry like you know like you see a way a teen or someone acts and it's like okay i need to put that action aside and look at what what what's deeper here and I kind of wish that that's how we would have reacted a little bit more as a, as a church. And but we still have that opportunity, and that this is, the Met Gala isn't the end of this, you know, right. sort of persecution of the church. But I need to look at like, okay, like that's the way they're seeing us, and and in some elements, it's kind of it's kind of fair, you know, in the way we've approached a lot of things, or you know, the sins of the church. But to look at it more as an opportunity to to look at the, the the tremendous healing that needs to be there that 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 is present in our culture as far as how they perceive the church and how mm-hmm. can we be an element or a tool towards that healing of um, healing the Im- image they have of the church or even their interactions with the church which is through us through our encounter with them which each, with each person and within our realm of influence yeah that, that makes a lot of sense actually i never thought about it like that but um just seeing how how they portray us or they, they portray the church uh, tells us a lot about maybe things that we did wrong or at least things that they think that we did wrong or are doing wrong. And fr- from that, we can better understand them as, as people, I think. That makes sense. I know for myself, like I said, I'm not a huge fashion person, but because it was blowing up so much, I took a look at some of the, the outfits and stuff like that. And I honestly think that some of the... <coughs> the outfits that were were worn were good they were very very good and and they showed good aspects of our faith and i think those are very beautiful and obviously there's some that were were not but i i think you're right that it's not fair to say that there's nothing good that can come from those because we can see like you said the perception that they have of us and grow from that right yeah cool yeah i think that's that's pretty cool well I guess one of the things we do every week is we try and have a challenge for our listeners. So I wonder, do you guys have any challenges? Otherwise, I can throw one out here. I don't have anything. Okay. I like Uh, to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So 
Steve, unless you've got something, maybe we can have two of them. But I'm going to say, guys, this week, I'm going to challenge you to think about what those things are in your life. We, we talked a lot about how, yes, the clothing is one aspect of things that draw people closer to us. But what in your life are you using as a tool to draw people, uh, yes, yes to you, but ultimately like that pyramid, drawing them to you for a higher purpose to point them then on to, to, to Christ. So maybe that's looking at what am I wearing? Maybe that's looking at what am I, what am I doing in my daily life? Am I drawing people into a life where they look at me and say, there's something greater going on here? And ultimately, our, our joy, the way that we live our lives, should draw people upwards. Um, so I think my challenge for you guys this week is just to think about that. Are, are you honestly living your life in a way that, that draws people up uh, towards Christ? So, Steve, you got anything else? I think that's it. <clears throat> I think it sounds good. Cool. Then, uh, Jamie, you want to let the people know where they can find you or they can follow you or find Paradigm? Yeah, for sure. So the website is www.paradigm-clothing.com. We're on Instagram, just as Paradigm Clothing. And so we have, obviously, our website with all the, you know, our brand stuff that is exactly what we're talking about, you know, trying to create a conversation that leads to an evangelization opportunity. Uh, but also, we have a different side of the company that not a lot of people know about. You kind of briefly mentioned it, but we do a lot of custom orders where we're bringing our mission to help improve other people's missions. So whether that's youth groups or bands, you know, we, we do the shirts for uh, Pints with Aquinas, for Matt Frad, for Jason Everton the Chastity Project. We're, we're working with Catching Foxes right now with Luke and Gomer. And like, you know, we're, we we... We're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. People don't realize it's us. Uh, or like, you know, Redeemed Online, that like Lenten video series. We're doing yeah. that for them. We do their shirts right now or uh, Vagabond Ministries. Like a, a bunch of different people we do shirts for, for whether that's for youth groups or retreats, for conferences, for bands, and helping bring our mission to improve their mission through, through, through apparel. Whether that's so cool. to make money, to create conversations, for marketing. So we do a lot of that too. So we have like the brand side of things and then we also have like that custom order side of things. That's really awesome. I didn't realize you guys were working with all those other people too. That's so cool. We are going to go ahead and put all of this contact information, the website, and we'll probably put your Twitter and Instagram handles on our notes. So guys, if you want to reach out to Jamie and his team, feel free to check out the notes section of the podcast. You can find all of that stuff as well as in the links too. With that, guys, do you have any shout outs? Steve, you want to start us off? Yeah, I mean, well, I uh, I just shouted out Kenzie because she's the one who gave me the book that I'm reading right now. Other than that, I don't really have too many. Okay. Uh, Jamie, do you got any shout outs this week? Oh, man. Never done podcast shout outs, you know, to hey. the, the, the cyber world. Uh, any of my, I guess it would be to any of my household brothers from when I went to Franciscan, which would be my aim to G household brothers, which have been actually a lot of guys from Houston, funny enough. But that's were how you there at the same time as Gomer? Yeah. We I was I was younger than him. He was like a grad student there when I was there. But yeah, we oh, were in the okay. same household. Uh, that's awesome. So and then you meant you mentioned Catholic stuff you should know, but also like Father John Nepple. I lived with the, the Nepple family when I was in Denver. No uh, way. Yeah. So there's this I guess a shout out to the small Catholic world out there, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. That is awesome. I, I want to give a quick shout out to Annie Rodriguez for connecting us and making this possible. She's a, a co-worker of mine and a, a former acquaintance of yourself. So really glad that um, she brought us together so we could do this. Yeah. And then also I want to give a shout out to a couple of my teens. Uh, like I mentioned, I, I gave a talk last night at Gordon's Parish. And even though it was at a different parish, a couple of my teens actually showed up. And uh, their names are Lauren and Tyler. And um, it was just really cool. One of the things that really just blew me away is um, they've both been asking me my my favorite Bible, uh, like versions and, and translations and stuff like that. And they are getting, for the first time, their own personal Bibles. And it's just really exciting for me that uh, these teens are just so on fire for, for the Lord and for Scripture that they just, for the first time, are getting their own I don't know. This is really cool to me. And we had a good conversation about that last night at the at the conference. So unless you guys have anything else, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap it up here. Jamie, thank you so much for, for being on the show. This has been awesome. Um, 
I know clothing's not really my thing, but I've learned a lot today. So I appreciate yeah, all that you awesome. do. Awesome. My pleasure. Cool. We'll go ahead and sign it off. Okay. We're recording. Hey, thank you all so much for joining us on another week of the adventure. Uh, just a reminder to please email us, follow us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, go to our website, thechristinculture.com, um, and just get more plugged in. Let us know what you're listening to, uh, what you liked about this episode, what you'd like us to do in the future. And also, please feel free to reach out to Jamie and his company. He's got a lot of awesome stuff. Go check out what he's got. It's really, really cool stuff. And if you guys haven't seen our website yet, like uh, like Steve just said, we have more than just the podcast there. We have the blog. We have videos. We have recommendations for different podcasts and YouTube channels and websites and books that we enjoy that help us do the Christ and culture thing and just uh, look at culture in a new lens. So I encourage you guys to check that out. And also, if you love what we do and you want to help us, you can do that. You can go to Patreon, which is just patreon.com backslash the Christ in culture, and you can help support us. In return, we will give you bonus content. We'll give you merchandise and different stuff like that. So please check that out for even just what would be a, a coffee a month or a meal a month. You can help sponsor us and, and get that bonus content. And it's a huge help to us. Uh, we don't make any money. Steve doesn't get anything from that. Gordon doesn't. I don't. It all goes back into the show to make this better for you guys. So with that, Steve, you want to sign us off? Yes. Thanks again, guys, for joining us on the adventure. Like I said, please check us out on social media. Please let us know. Reach out to us. Talk to us. You know, this is the beginning of a conversation that we want to have with you guys. And please prayerfully consider helping us out and have a happy, uh, blessed Holy Week. Yeah, for sure. Bye, guys.